Hey, welcome back everyone. So today we are building out our first series of this home labs. So the first thing we're going to do, uh, we need to build our cluster. So I have all my servers already prepped. Proxmox is the actual um, VMM that I'm using and I've already built everything out. All the hard drives are formatted. So now it's time to actually get the clusters running. So instead of um, jumping from server to server, I'm just going to bring everything into one um, cluster. So as you can see right here, I have um, the R710, R720, R730. Um, those are the names of the servers. I kind of match it up to what the blade is. So these are kind of like older servers that I'm using. Um, but it reminds me of what server I'm on so that I know where I'm working. All right, so I'm going to start off using the 710 as the host and build. So um, how you start off doing a cluster, you go to your data center at the top right here, and you just find cluster. So data center at the top, find cluster, and you want to create a cluster, right? And then when you go to the other tool, you'll do the same thing, but instead of creating a cluster, you're going to join the cluster, and I'll show you here shortly how that's done. So since we're starting off, and this is going to be the main, we're going to do the R710, we're going to create a cluster. And if you look at the bottom here, it says multiple links are used as failover. Lower numbers have higher priority, okay? So you can do links, right? Um, right here if you're trying to aggregate. So the cluster name that I'm going to use is just called Home Labs, which is a part of the series that we're doing right now. And we're just going to go ahead and create, click Create. And once this is complete and it says Task is OK, you can look, you'll see it's done right there. You just click um, the X. And then what you're going to do, you want to click the join information because this is the information now you need to share with the other um, servers so that they can be a part of the cluster. So you want to click join and right here you just click copy information and then you go to the next server, click on data center, cluster here and then you, instead of creating and now you're going to click join cluster and all you're going to do is just paste the information right there. Now, right here, we resolve it by just clicking the drop down and it will find the actual server that we're working with 150 and then the password is going to be the password of the main server that we were working with okay and then once everything is good to go you just go ahead and click join And once this is running, if you go back to the main, you will see this will turn red once it's in operation. It goes to gray once it's almost done. And then you will see it turns to green once it's complete. And there you go. So now um, the 720 is a part of this cluster. So we're going to go to the 730 now and do the same thing. We're going to join the clusters as well. Simple. Right there, put it in. Same thing, put the password in. And then click join. Similar thing, come back over here and watch while the 730 comes on board. And there you have it. So um, it goes to gray. And then it goes to green here shortly. And then that's it. So now I can pretty much close out these other um, boxes because now I can manage everything um, within just one console just using from the 151 address and you can see I kind of label everything so I try to keep it clean so the 10, the 20, the 30 and then I have the IP addresses just running similar down and then if you drill down you will still see all of the hard drives that are built out with them as well right so this is the local, 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 and these are the hard drives that came over. So this is the 100 gig, and then this is the other hard drive that came over with it as well. So you can see this one is 850 gigabytes, and it's similar to this one, that one right there, and then you just bring them over. So then, um, 
while we're here, if we had hard drives that were never um, a part of this, you can come over to your disk and right here, and you can see if it's if it's if it's a part of the whole um, structure, but it's not showing up like under here. You can basically go in and wipe these disks, right? So, for example, if I wanted these to show up, the three terabytes, is, I can go ahead and um, check this out to see. These are all built out, so you can see the SD3 and then the SD. The SD3 is the storage, which was right there, and then the data. So if you come back over to the disk, you can see that I have SDC and the B. So those are basically two of the drives that are a part of this this um this box right here. And then a similar setup to here, I brought over a 3.5 terabyte, and I created also the volume go for it. So you can create directories if you want to, but um, once your cluster is set up, you just need to go in and build out the rest of this however you want it. Um, if you had a new disk and you don't know how to bring it over, the disk would show up actually over here. And you would just click on this. You can wipe the disk and bring it over, or you can um, actually let me do it real quick and show you. So, for example, this right here, we have all the disk under here this is the data that i brought over under the four terabytes if you click on this it should match up with the four terabyte because that's the data and that's the 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 one right here that says the sdb so this matches up with the data right here so if i come here for this one same thing i should have my other data so this is a 3.5 terabyte and let's see where that's the eight so let's go ahead and look at this one real quick. And you um, can just go ahead and, and do a wipe on this one, because it's a, it's a different one. If you look at this and this, this is actually branching like um, just different partitions. And then this is where the C drive is loaded. So right here, you can wipe this one, and you won't have any harm to it. So once you wipe it, Right there, you'll just initialize the disk, just the same way you, how you'd work like on Windows. And once this is initialized, you can come down here now, and you can create a volume if it's not already created. It will show you, and then you can just call this data if you choose to, and then add it to storage. So now the data right here is showing up, as you can see, and once I click this, once it's ready, this is uh, over here, summary. Once I click this and go to summary, now I can see the 3.5 terabyte that comes over. So now I have the actual hard disk that I want to use for um, this, this server. Similar process, come over here and check out what I have. So I have these disks. Just remember, you can close these out. So you don't, normally the SDA is like the first drive you can see the difference so I can start with this one I'll wipe it and you'll see the SDB so those are like the the way you identify it slash dev SDB so that's the first one and then I wiped it so now I can initialize the disk after I wipe it and then similar to this one see you notice I can't initialize it yet because it's not wiped so you gotta wipe it first and then once you wipe it, it's basically like you're formatting the disk if it were like on a Windows box. And then once that's done, then you just click initialize. So now if you look over here on the left hand side, when I go over to the drives itself and I create a volume, notice that the B is the first one that was selected because the A is already there. So if I select the disk and just call this data, right, and create data under here. If you look closely over here now, data shows up right there as you can see, right? And it takes a while to come over, so if I click on that in summary, now you can see the three terabyte. So now let's go back to this one, and we're gonna create another volume, and the SDC is the last disk that's over here. This one is the 6.9 terabyte, so we'll call this storage. 
right? And just click create. Make sure you add in it, and then look for storage to populate over here as well. And there it is, right there. So now the location. These are basically, if you look at them, they look like databases. Our little disk. This is where we're going to store all of our data under the cluster, right? So now everything is built out, and if I click on storage, just for your sake, uh, I'll show you right here, 6.9 terabyte, everything is good to go. So the cluster is built out. I have everything that I need. Um, it's configured for each server, and um, just going to make sure that everything is good to go. A good thing to remember as well is that when you start creating like your VMs, they're going to give them an ID, like a number. You want to try to separate these numbers. So, for example, if my R710, if I'm starting to create a VM over here, and I'll show in the other videos, um, the numbers might start off with 100. So, down here, you might want to select like a different number pattern to go. So, this could be like a 200 series. This could be a 300 series. And that's how I'm going to build mine. So, everything over here will be 100 series. Everything here will be the 200 um, servers, and then this will be the 300. So the bigger database is here, the mid database, and then this is a smaller one, okay? Um, this is basically, guys, how you wrap it up and actually create a cluster for your Proxmox. Um, if you have any questions, just reach out. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. We appreciate it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, hit that bell button as well so you can be notified every time I post something. And without further ado, um, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.